Hello and welcome to eNASTA. This is a video lesson for English language fourth grade high school students. My name is Davor Cherny and I will be your teacher for today. Today's lesson has the title Real Heroes. In this lesson, you will do a bit of reading and listening, writing a short text in reported speech, and you will try to describe a person you consider to be a hero. Let's get ready, get your equipment ready, and of course, you can stop the video at any time and do the activities suggested in the video and then play the video again. Also, in the video description, you will be able to find all the links needed for this lesson. This is a preview of the links that we are going to use. The most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why. You say hello to others. And then you wonder why you're here. People tell you to be brave. You do extraordinary things. You feel strong. You sacrifice. And as the famous David Bowie song says, we can be heroes just for one day. In some of the previous lessons, you mentioned people like Martin Luther King, Helen Keller, Louis Braille, uh, some civil rights fighters, and so on. So we can say that these people can be considered heroes. So what I would like you to do is think about these three questions. Who are heroes or heroines? What makes them great? And which attributes do they possess? So, heroes, people who have done something remarkable, courageous, have overcome great obstacles. What makes them great? Well, it's their character, traits, or acts of courage or kindness make them great. And which attributes do they possess? Well, they are sometimes brave or strong. They can be kind, fearless, emphatic, selfless, generous, or persistent. These are just some of the ideas that we can use to answer these three questions. Are these heroes? People like Robin Hood, Florence Nightingale, Martin Luther, Neil Armstrong, Matya Gubetz, Pata Katapainovic, Mahatma Gandhi, Superman, Oscar Schindler, Hercules. Well, these people can be considered heroes. This is the second part of the list. Alexander Fleming, Alexander the Great, Nikola Yurishich, Ulysses. Roald Amundsen, Richard the Lionheart, Rosa Parks, David Livingston, Batman, Nelson Mandela. So, all these people can be considered heroes. What I would like you to do is divide these people, these heroes, into these four categories. So, whether they were social or political activist, whether they were a war or a battle hero, where did they fall into the category of researcher, scientist, medical worker? Or maybe they belong to the imaginary world or, or the world of legends. So who are our heroes? Researchers, imaginary world, war, battle heroes, social political activists. So the research scientist medical worker, we have people like Florence Nightingale, Neil Armstrong, David Livingstone, Alexander Fleming, and Roald Amundsen. Then, from the imaginary world or world of legends, we have Ulysses, Superman, Robin Hood, Batman, or Hercules. From the world of war and battle heroes, there is the famous Matija Gubetz, Nikola Jurišić, Richard the Lionheart, Alexander the Great, and Kata Penović. And the last category, social and political activist, Rosa Parks, Nelson Mandela, Mahatma Gandhi, 
Oscar Schindler and Martin Luther King Jr. So these are our heroes. So these were our heroes. If you want to do a bit of research and if there are heroes from this list that you haven't heard about yet, try to find more info about one of the heroes and share the information with your class. Try to concentrate on the things that made them great. Let's move on. Let's do a bit of reading. You're going to read an article about a famous singer whose courageous military service made him a hero in a critical situation. And this happened long before his successful music career. You can follow the QR code. One will take you to his, one of his famous songs and the other one will take you to an article about him. So as you read the text, try to answer these four questions. What was the mission of the troops stationed in Kosovo in 1999? The troop belongs, belonged to two different military sites. Which ones? What exactly did James Blunt do that took a lot of courage and guts? And how did his decision affect the mission in Kosovo? So read the text, pause the video, and try to answer these questions. Let's check the answers. So what was the mission in 99? Their mission was to keep tensions from breaking out into violence. Which sides were on? It was a joint peacekeeping task force made up of Russian and NATO soldiers. What did James Blunt exactly do? He refused to invade and take over an airfield where the Russian army had already settled before the NATO troops arrived. He felt invading would cause undue tension with the Russians and potentially undo all of the peacekeeping that had taken place since the Kosovo war ended just a few days prior. And how did his decision affect the mission? They were able to resolve the conflict peacefully. Here is an additional activity. Uh, read the text again following the link or the QR code. and. Try to answer these four questions. What does it mean to put someone on trial by military tribunal? A soldier higher in rank in charge of more soldiers and with greater responsibility is a... How do we say, in other words, reaching a solution and going beyond a normal or acceptable limit in degree or amount? So follow the links and try to do activity for yourself. And here is another exercise for us to do in this video lesson, word formation. So we have a couple of sentences and we have a word in bracket that we have to transform to fit into our gap. So jumping into the flames to grab the baby was pure bravery. Peter went out of the way. Some of our journalists deserve the highest honors for fearlessly exposing corruption. He seemed, he seemed undaunted by all the opposition to his idea. Of course, following the QR code here, you can download some of the materials used in this lesson and do them at your own speed. Here is the second set of sentences. What a daring walk in space when Neil Armstrong stepped on the moon that memorable day. She tried valiantly to defend him against his critics. Frederick was renowned for his boldness. And we watched our teams heroic struggle to win back the cup. So these were just some examples of what heroes do. 
The next activity we have on our menu for today is a little story of a person called Mati. So you're going to watch and listen to Mati's story and you will try to answer the following questions. How long did it take for Mattia to recover from the accident? What helped him to get better? Why do you think he turned back to alcohol and drug abuse after such a terrible accident? How did he find hope and purpose again? What does he do now? How many schools and which countries has he visited in the past 12 years? Which sports is he actively involved in and what other hobbies, interests does he also have? And what is his final message to the young generation? The first QR code takes you to Mattia's story if you want to watch it again. And the second QR code takes you to the materials where you also find these questions you have to answer. Let's watch the video. Hi guys, my name is Matija, I am 40, I live in Zaprosic, and this is my story. First of all, I'd like to begin with a statement. The most important days in your life are the day when you were born and the day when you find out why. In my case, the problem was the length of time between my most important two days. Actually, to figure out why I was here, it took me 23 years. I was 17 and uh, my friend picked me up on a motorcycle one Saturday evening. I was standing at the bar in the nightclub and uh, my plan was, like every other Saturday, to get drunk, dance and have a good time. Well, that is about the last scene uh, I remember about the uh, the day when I had a motorcycle accident. I woke up uh, from half coma condition after two weeks in hospital. I didn't remember anything. The only thing I knew is that I had broken my spine and that I didn't feel my legs. I had two severe surgeries and barely stayed alive. As I said, I was 17 and there was no way that I was going to live as a wheelchair user. You have to take into consideration that prior to the accident, I was a skater, roller skater, biker and snowboarder. And uh, to accept uh, a wheelchair lifestyle was a huge mountain to climb. While I was laying in my hospital room, I was seriously considering committing a suicide. But as time was passing, I started exercising and I was trying to recover. Two years after, I was feeling better mentally and physically. And I started going back to a normal way of life as much as I could. I was still in a wheelchair, but uh, that didn't stop me from partying in the nightclubs, drinking and uh, using drugs. I even bought a BMW and put the hand commands in the car. I was working out and I had a nice girlfriend. So I thought, what more can one have? After a few years of partying, I messed up my mind and I couldn't function normally. I was 22 and my life was on a downward spiral. I was a mentally messed up person in a wheelchair. Peace was something far, far away and my life was kind of fading. In my deepest struggles, humbled by my circumstances. I looked for help and uh, I met two guys who introduced me to my personal hero. In a very short amount of time, uh, through reading the book about Jesus and surrendering my life to him, I experienced such peace and uh, acceptance, a joy wrapped up in love and security, something that I needed so much. Uh, drugs and alcohol lost the grip on me and my hero became my best friend. My encounter with the God of hope led me to a purpose-driven life that I lead today. I traveled to all parts of Croatia and uh, speak in our primary and secondary schools. 
about purpose and meaning, encouraging students to say no to drugs and alcohol. In the past uh, 12 years, I visited about 100 schools in Croatia and uh, a number of schools in the neighboring countries. I had also an opportunity to share my story in the United States and in Africa too. I also have uh, the privilege to be a part of the leadership on youth summer camps and uh, to invest in younger generations, help them navigate the currents of life. In spite of uh, any disability, I think we all need movement. So I continue to be physically active through various sporting activities, skiing, cycling, and swimming. I love music very much, so I learned to play a guitar and saxophone. No matter what the circumstances are, life is good. And because of that, uh, I would like to finish with one short story. There were two wise men. One was young and one was old. The young wise man was quite arrogant and was thinking that he could trick the older wise man so he could become wiser or better than him. So the young wise man thought to himself, I'll take a butterfly in my hands and ask the old wise man if the butterfly is alive or dead. If he says the butterfly is alive, I'll squeeze the hands and kill the butterfly. If he says the butterfly is dead, I will let it go. So the young wise man came to the old wise man and asked him, is this butterfly dead or alive? The old wise man was thinking for a while and then said, the answer is in your hands. In other words, decisions led by your conscious will determine your life's quality. Thank you guys for your attention. See you and maybe talk to you in person somewhere in the future. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed Matthias' story. Let's check your answers to these questions. So it took him two years to recover from the accident. Exercising helped him get better. He might have felt desperate and hopeless, or he was too young to understand the magnitude of the accident. Maybe he was trying to forget the bad event through alcohol and drugs. He learned about the God who loved him, and who still had a good plan for his life. He travels to all parts of Croatia, visiting schools and talking to youth about how to say no to drugs and alcohol. In the past 12 years, he has visited about 100 schools in Croatia and the neighboring countries, as well as some in Africa and the United States. He is skiing, cycling and swimming, and he plays the guitar and the saxophone. His final message to the youth is that our decisions lead the course of our life. If you want to watch Mattia's story again, please follow the QR code links on the previous slide. So what did Mattia tell us? For example, Mattia says, my plan was to have a good time as usual. Mattia said that his plan had been to have a good time as usual. Mattia also says, I didn't remember anything. Mattia said that he hadn't remembered anything. What are we doing here? Yes, we are reporting Mattia's words. When we report somebody's words, 
it is called reported speech. You can see in red, I pointed out the personal pronouns, how they change when we transform from direct speech to reported speech. Mati also says, I have broken my spine. Matia told us that he had broken his spine. You can see the shift or change in the pronoun. Is the butterfly in my hands alive or dead? So this is a question. How do we report the question? One wise man asked the other wise man if the butterfly in his hands was alive or dead. So we are talking about reported speech. So let's repeat. What is reported speech? The name itself tells us that we use it to report somebody's words. Please follow the links above and revise the rules. If there is something new, note it down in your notebook. Reporting verbs. Verbs like say, tell, ask, advise, agree. There is a tense shift. I live in Zagreb. He said he lived in Zagreb. Questions turn to indirect questions. What did you do last summer? She asked me what I did last summer. Yes, no questions are reported using if and whether words. Time expressions change, like yesterday becomes the day before. And there is, of course, a change of pronoun. To practice additionally reported speech, follow the link or the QR code given here. Uh, make sure you click the button show explanation after the, you do the activities so you can check your answers and additional explanations to the activity. Over to you. First task. Do you know anyone in your life who has overcome adverse situations or helped someone come out of them? If you don't know such a person, do some research, ask your friends or parents, and try to find out who they are and what makes them heroes. Make notes and share a talk with your friends or classmates about this person. Task two, watch the video again using the QR code or the link above and using the reporting verbs, write a short report in five to 10 sentences about Matthias story. So write down what Matthias told us. An additional handy link, introducing clauses of contrast, purpose, reason, and result. You can brush up on this following the link and doing the activities, filling up the gaps with the appropriate word. And of course, make sure that you click the button check answers for more feedback and explanation on the use of connectors. And this brings us to the end of this lesson. Go through your checklist. Have you answered most of the questions from the video? Have you read the text about a hero gone music star? Have you revised reported speech and reporting verbs? Have you reported on the video? Have you found out about another hero? Have you practiced the use of connectors? And have you searched on the internet about a famous hero? I would like to thank you for your attention and hope we will hear and see each other some other time. Bye.